thanks very much and hello everybody. Uh, it's good to see so many old friends and uh, friends who aren't old uh, as well. Um, the, uh, when the National Board created the Kelly Award when I retired, I was deeply honored. Uh, I was the first recipient. Uh, the second recipient was a guy named Bill Clinton. The entire executive committee of the board and I went over to the White House to present it to him. Um, and a, a number of distinguished people have received this award over the years. I myself have appropriately have nothing to do with the selection of the winners, uh, but uh, I can, when I heard that uh, uh, Mary Futrell was going to receive the award this year, I, have, I just want to tell you, I was overjoyed. Uh, I was thrilled and I asked if I could uh, have the liberty of making a few remarks about Mary uh, and thanks a lot for letting me do that. Um, the uh, first time I met Mary was the day that the first meeting occurred of the 63 person board of directors of the National Board. Uh, I went to Mary's office. She and I did not know each other. Uh, she had every good reason to question a number of things about my selection from the nature of the search uh, to um, uh, uh, why I was going to have an office in Michigan as well as Washington. Mary, you remember all that? And um, I promised two things to you at that time, Mary. And the first was th that uh, while I wasn't going to work for you, I would work with you in every way. And that uh, to me meant that there would be no surprises from my side to you. I would tell you what was gonna go happen, what was going on, good news and bad news, and tell you the truth. And I asked, yeah, you know, so I would have really liked to be able to. Uh, or you would you like to say something there, Mary? Do you remember that meeting? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we began our working relationship then, and um, over the um, course of the first year and a half, the 63 person board met many, many times, uh, dozens and dozens of hours. Most of them in plenary session, and the NEA will be happy to know, strictly operating the plenary session by Robert's Rules of Orders. And we came up with the statement, what you should know and be able to do. Um, nothing like it had ever happened in the teaching profession. <clears throat> the only pre prevailing standards at the time, if there, you want to call them that, were the full multiple choice tests for the national teacher exam used for state licensing. Um, and so it, we, we set out to create high and rigorous standards for what teachers should know and be able to do. And after the first year and a half, we, we, published, we, we had agreed, to, and the 63 person board had unanimously agreed, not in a pro forma way, but laboriously, paragraph by paragraph, approved the statement what teachers should know and be able to do. Through that process, Mary Futrell was a leader. She was committed to the concept of high and rigorous standards, she was forthright. She was um, both a, an advocate for uh, her points of view and, and a representative voice for teachers, but she was also a member of a new board and working to achieve um, a, a working collaborative arrangement among us and actually in the end, uh, unanimous approval of that statement. Um, Mary was, um, I made some, some notes here, bear with me. Um, Mary was not only a leader in the process of developing what teachers should know and be able to do, but then we started off in the process of creating standards, which pretty, we had to create 25 fields of teaching specialization and decide we were going to do it that way. And then create, start the process of creating standards and performance assessments that were unprecedented, unprecedented in any profession uh, to make those uh, make the high and rigorous standards come alive in all each of those 25 fields. This took time, took a lot of money, ultimately a couple hundred million dollars. And Mary was a leader in um, the process of understanding that it was important to take that process on the road into every state in the country, all 50 states. And I remember I was skeptical, Mary, and you said, no, Jim, you gotta do it. And make sure you take teachers with you. So I didn't go to 50, I went to 30. And our then Vice Chair Claire Felton went to the other 20. And in each case, we went to the state capitol. We invited uh, leaders of all the education organizations, the teaching professional groups, teacher unions, 
administrative groups, governors, legislators, corporate and foundation officials, and we told it like it was, unvarnished, here's what we're doing, here's the problems we've had. A couple of times we had to stop the machinery and fix things that weren't right and weren't, weren't good enough. And it was a very, and then listen to people and what they had to say. Mary, uh, that, that process wouldn't have happened for the National Board unless Mary Futrell had uh, put her shoulder to the wheel and said, this, this has to be done, folks. We have to do it, uh, not to slow us down, but to build broader understanding of, of the National Board. Uh, during that process, we had to, over the course of the 10 or 12 years, we had to get a lot of federal money in, and we ended up getting, I've uh, forgotten what it was, 105 or $110 million. We had a lot of big breaks because of Bill Clinton and Jim Hunt, and uh, who was incredible as our board chair. But it wouldn't have happened unless Mary Futrell, and I have to say Al Shanker, had both said to the right people in Congress, there weren't, a, there weren't a whole lot of right people that we really had to reach, but they said, made very clear it was one of their priorities that the National Board be funded, and not just funded, but funded in such a way to preserve the, in, the, the independence and the integrity of this as a professional body, not a governmental body. Remember that, Mary? And um, it, it uh, wouldn't have worked if we had allowed the, the if we'd taken the money as it was first offered and allowed the U.S. Department of Education to write the RFPs and to look over our shoulder every few months about whether it liked it, whoever was running the department, whether they liked our standards or they approved of our assessments. In the end, it was none of their business what our standards and our assessments were. And um, I appreciate it very much, Mary, that you put the political force of the NEA and the ALDA, AFT into making sure of the, about the, uh, that we got the money, but we got it in a way that didn't undermine uh, the, the independence and the integrity of the national board. So um, I'll just conclude it this way. Uh, I can tell you that in the course of Mary's eight, six years or eight, 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 eight or nine years on the board, uh, she was a teacher to all of us. There had never been a board like that assembled. We learned to work together uh, and we learned from Mary. She also listened. To all, and, and she personified and exemplified the idea that we had to listen to each other, show respect for each other, but um, we had to, in the end, listen hardest to the voices of teachers. Um, so um, Mary, as a person, was lovely to work with because she was humble. She wasn't arrogant. Uh, she wasn't belligerent in expressing her points of view. Uh, no one doubted what her point of view was, uh, but it was always expressed in a way that um, uh, showed respect for all the people who were around the table who had a lot of different points of view. Um, I would say that if not that I am a best person to judge all this, but that Mary was a skilled leader of the NEA. To say the least, uh, the idea of the National Board was controversial uh, at the time, it was um, new. There was a lot of resistance inside the NEA. And um, the fact that Mary Hatwood Futrell uh, made very clear uh, the depth and solidity of her commitment to the National Board um, allowed us to have the space to develop it in a way that the NEA could support. Um, I, I, I learned tremendously about in, in that process, Mary, and I really appreciated it. So um, after the, then I learned something about Mary after she left the presidency of the NEA. Uh, she said you know, to herself and to us, you know, I don't know enough. I want to I want to learn more about education and education policy. By the way, constant learning is part of the ethos of the National Board, right? She she took it to heart. She went back to the university and got herself a doctorate, and she became Professor Futrell, and then Dean Futrell. So Mary, I give you my congratulations. I can't tell you how happy I am that uh, you're the recipient of this award this year. Um, and may I say, uh, I love you, and I respect you, and I wish that we could give each other a hug <laughs> best we can through uh, cyberspace. Thank you.
thanks for being such a good friend. Thank you. And thanks for letting me make these remarks tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, it is so important for us to remember our history. And uh, your comments tonight were just a wonderful uh, tribute to Mary and to the founding folks with uh, the National Board. Let me turn it over now to for the past president of NEA and one of our former board members, uh, Keith uh, Geiger, who will make comments. Go ahead, Keith. Thank you, Terry, for allowing me to make some comments tonight. And not only was I a past board member, but I was on the staff of the National Board for about six or seven years. So I've seen the board from both sides. Uh, thank you for allowing me to make some comments tonight. And mine won't be as long as Jim's were because he said most of what I was going to say about Mary, but I'll repeat, I'll repeat a few of them. And I have my notes too, but they're on the scoreboard right behind the, the iPad. So I, if you look up a little bit, I'm looking at it. Mary, I wanna personally congratulate you for this very deserved award. And I can't think of anybody that deserves it more than you do. Your friendship, your leadership, and your wise counsel are as, were as helpful to me in the four, six years that I served as vice president and you were president as anybody in the NEA or outside the NEA. And I know I have thanked you several times, but in front of this group, I want to again thank you for the leadership that you provided not only in the NEA, but also for me as someone who served as your vice president for six years. As Jim said, you were on the original board of the National Board, and it was 63 members rather than the 30-some that it is now, and it was that way for political reasons and the right reasons. If this organization was going to thrive and move forward, it had to have the buy-in of all of the education community, of the business community, of the political leaders in our states and at the national level. And in order to do that, we had to give people a voice at the table. And so the board of necessity in the beginning had to be larger than it is now because we had to uh, give all of these people the, the voice at the table in order to make the proper decisions. In my mind though, of that 63 member board, it was Jim Hunt, Jim Kelly, Al Shanker, and you, Mary, who made the board successful. The four of you I know met on many occasions. I know you had a lot of discussions about how the board should be formed and how it shouldn't be formed. And I know that your leadership among those four and among the 63 was very, very critical in the success of the board. I also know, and Jim mentioned this before, not only did you have to take a leadership role at the board level, but you had to take a leadership role at the NEA level because we had some very, 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 very lively discussions at the NEA executive committee level, at the NEA board level, on the future of the board, on how we were going to remain involved in the board, how it was going to be created and how it was going to be formed. And it was because of your uh, willingness to listen to all signs, sides, it was uh, your respect for every member who was at a microphone speaking either for or against it. You were on task all the time. And yes, when you had to be, you were forceful with the executive committee and the board. And all of that is appreciated and was appreciated by members of the board and the executive committee at the time and still are. And I would be remiss if I did not make a comment about the gentleman for whom this award is named. Jim Kelly, in all the years that I served on the board, your wisdom was beyond my wildest imagination. I always knew if we had a problem, or if we had a question about something that you would have an answer to that problem or that question, and generally that answer was correct. I also know that you respected and you listened to Mary Hatwood Futrell's suggestions as we were moving forward. So I thank you 
And Mary, again, I congratulate you on this award. It is a most deserved award. Thank you, Terry, for allowing me to make comments. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Uh, now that's uh, Becky Pringle, current president of NEA, if she'd make a few remarks. Oh my! Um. Uh, so thank thank you, uh, Terry. Um. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jim Kelly. Yeah. There's a reason this award is named after you. So thank you, uh -huh. Ke uh, Keith, for lifting that up. You know, it's so good to see. So many NEA friends joining us this evening. Mary, I don't know if you are getting the chance to, to see all of the Zoom faces in the boxes. Uh, I, I, of course, Keith just talked talk there and Dennis is here and I see our executive committee members here and NEA board members are here, Mary. Uh, my vice president and your BFF, Miss Princess Moss, she's here. Um, and so many of our NEA staff, not just those who are, are staffing us now at the National Board, but those who uh, were staff members. Uh, I, mm, I think I have the distinction, Terry, of probably the only one that served on the board, I don't know, four times, I'm not sure. But thank you all for showing up uh, for Mary. Um, I am so, so glad that you are here. You know, for as long as I can remember, I wanted to be a teacher. From the time I forced my two sisters to play school on the front steps of our North Philly home, to the time I stepped into my first classroom, wide-eyed, full of enthusiasm, a sense of hope and promise. And you know, I had no idea that public edu education would soon become a notion at risk. As more and more people outside of education began asserting themselves in, in the direction of public education and my profession, I turned to my union to find a place where I could find power and influence in my profession and in my school and in my classroom. I was encouraged by then President Mary Hatwood Futrell, who wrote this. Along with thousands of my teaching colleagues throughout the United States, I have watched and I have listened and I've responded to the avalanche of education reform reports that have emerged from the 1980s. From that unique perspective of both classroom and teacher and representative of the then 1.9 million members of the National Education Association, much of what I have witnessed causes me to worry. What concerns me most is the absence within the educational community itself of any real consensus on some professional issues and objectives that are essential to education reform. I am concerned that unless educators themselves assume the right and responsibility for establishing high, meaningful standards for preparation and entry and practice. The governance of our profession will remain the province of legislators and bureaucrats and other non-educators. I am concerned that even where we have succeeded in creating credible standards, we seem to lack the collective will to insist that they be adhered to. And she ended as she always did with Rabbi Hillel's question. <laughs> if not us, who? <laughs> if not now, when? When? Mary issued that challenge in 1986. <laughs> <laughs> it's what fueled her determination to champion the creation of the National Board in 1987. And I met her <laughs> on the big screen at the 1989 Representative Assembly. It was my first. It was her last. But I will never forget Oh my, Mary, the sense of pride and power that you instilled in me with your words. 
Mary continued to challenge NEA at that convention in her brilliant speech to us to live into our purpose, to stand in our power, to take our responsibility, to own our professional profession, to lead. Many tears were shed at that RA. From the first day to the last, we made sure we had boxes and boxes of tissues to dry our eyes that overflowed because we knew we were witnessing, we were in the presence of greatness. That this incredible woman believed in us she believed in our ability as professionals and as a union to transform teaching and learning. She left us uh, this amazing legacy that now as president, I have the honor and the privilege to continue. You know, I asked Mary to have lunch with me last year as I embarked on, on running for NEA president. I wanted to pick her brain to learn at her feet to ask her questions about what she had accomplished and, and what she felt NEA yet needed to achieve. Mary, you remember I brought a notebook with me that day. I wanted to capture your every word, your, your wisdom, um, insights that guide me to this day. I keep that notebook beside me, Mary. What Mary doesn't know <laughs> is that after I dropped her off at her home that day, um, the waterworks again came. The tears this time came because of a deep sense of appreciation that I had been blessed to have this role model, who, by the way, Mary, I was so afraid to talk to you when you sat with VEA, I think in the mid 90s sometime, um, I was an NEA director then, and, and you were sitting on the steps between VEA and PSEA. We were right beside each other that year. And I kept trying to work up my courage to come and talk to you. I never did. I was sitting at arm's length from you. And, and here I am now. I have this, I'm so blessed that I have you as this icon and a mentor. And that day at lunch, you so generously shared your experiences and your ideas, your counsel, and most importantly, you shared your encouragement. Mary's dedication to the profession of teaching certainly has earned her the James Kelly Award, but she deserves so much more. The National Board, the NEA, and this Black girl from North Philly owes her our gratitude, our highest praise, and our endearing devotion. Thank you so very much, Mary. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Becky, you make me proud to uh, be a teacher. Always a teacher. Always. Thank you for your comments, Keith, and uh, thank you, uh, Jim. It's my honor to serve as president of this historic uh, organization as the chair of the board. And I'm sure Peggy joins me as president to say what an honor it is to present the James A. Kelly Award for advancing accomplished teaching to Dr. Mary Hatwood Petrell. Dr. Petrell was the first president of NEA. During the early days of the national board, we've all heard she played an instrumental role. She was strong and passionate supporter. She's been a tireless advocator for educators and children for over 60 years. She began her career like I began my career in a segregated high school. She started in Alexandria, Virginia. After the 1983 report, she joined the Carnegie Task Force on Teaching as a profession. And of course, we all know that was the roots of the National Board. In the mid 90s, as Jim and Keith have both pointed out, she went on to become Dean of the George Washington University Graduate School of Education and Human Development. She's currently Professor, professor Emerita of Education Policy at George Washington University. On behalf of the Board of Directors, staff, and more than 125,000 National Board Certified Teachers, I'm pleased to present 
the James A. Kelly Award for Advancing Accomplished Teaching to Dr. Mary Atwood Petrell. Mary, you get to have the last word on these people. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I am so honored that you selected me to be the 2020 recipient of the James A. Kelly Award. And I want to thank the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards for the outstanding work that you have done over the last 30 some years. As I was thinking about today, I reflected back to the 1980s and I thought about when we came together as a task force to look at issues that were plaguing education and what could we do to address those issues? What could we do to bring about change within the profession? And the group was very diverse. And obviously we had very diverse opinions about what we thought should happen. And uh, Governor Hunt and Jim Kelly and others were very good at bringing us together, even though we disagreed, we ended up coming up with a report. And one of the recommendations in that report was that we would create a National Board of Professional mm -hmm. Teaching Standards. And that board was created as, as was indicated in 1987. But three years before the board was created, there was another report that came out and it was called A Nation at Risk. And basically what that report said was that the United States of America was not doing a good job of educating the citizens within this country. And that we needed to do more to make sure that each and every child, each and every person received the quality education. And one of the things we talked about was that education is the foundation of our democracy and every citizen deserves to have a quality education. When I stopped and thought about it this week, I want to ask you a question. Is the United States of America still a nation at risk? I don't know what your answer is, but my answer is yes. We're still a nation at risk because we have not made the changes that we should have made. When you go back and look at the a nation at risk report, they talked about about 40 recommendations categorized under the five areas. One had to do with the curriculum and what we actually teach in our schools. The second one dealt with standards and how we evaluate, assess what we do. The third one dealt with time. We, we was recommended that our school day be extended to seven hours and that the school year be 220 days. We have one of the shortest school years of any country in the world. The fourth one dealt with teacher salaries and teacher support. And the fifth one dealt with leadership and making sure the schools have the physical, physical support that they need. And so when we go back and look, a few things were done, but most of the recommendations were not put in place. And if you ask why, it was primarily because of political reasons as to why those recommendations were not implemented. And we have to remember that in America, we do not have a national system of education. We have 50 state systems of education and they control whether or not we are going to reform or stay the same. And sometimes in order to change, strange things happen and you are knocked on the head and you don't realize what's going on. But somebody is trying to tell you, we need to change. And that's exactly what happened with COVID-19. When we were told that we had to close our schools because of the virus, how many of us would have thought a year ago that 80 to 90% of the school districts of the United States of America would be functioning virtually. We would be teaching online and all of a sudden the teachers have to learn a totally new way of teaching, of instructing, and we're not face-to-face -face anymore. But the teachers did it and we're still doing it because we are committed to making sure every child receives a good education and doing the best that we can. And we look at where we are today and I think about the changes that we've made yesterday 80 to 90% of what we're doing today is virtual. But when the crisis is over, are we going to revert back to the way we were, to the traditional model of schooling? To be honest with you, I don't think so. We may have blended learning, or we may have schools that are totally, totally virtual, but we are not going to be the same as we were a year ago, or even five years ago, or 50 years ago. And so that raises a question. What are we going to do to help the teachers to be successful as they work with and teach the children who are in their classrooms or not in their classroom, but they were looking at them virtually. And that's where the national board comes in because I think 
that we really have to be serious about transforming our education system and also transforming the teaching profession to help the teachers have the experience, the training, the support that they need in order to deal with all the changes that are going to continue to take place within our diverse technological society. When I think about the National Board, I think about what you're doing right now. You're very, very strong, and you're the closest to us being a profession of any attempt we've made in the history of this country. And I think about the fact that you have formed partnerships with other professions to learn from them about what it means to be a professional. I think about the fact that you are working with the NEA and the AFT and other educational organizations to build support for our schools and to make sure every single child, every single person receives a quality education. I think about your collaboration with colleges and universities. And one of the first things I did when I went to GW, as I said to the faculty there, we need to work with the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards to make sure what we're doing when we prepare our teachers, they know what it means or, or if to be nationally certified if they desire to do so. And they said yes. And, they, and we've been collaborating with the National Board for quite some time. But we have a lot of work to do. And sometimes you know, somebody's knocking on the door. Opportunity's knocking on the door. And that's what's happening right now. We may not recognize it as an opportunity, but it is. We have to decide, are we going to open the door and if we open the door, are we going to welcome that opportunity to change or are we going to close the door or are we going to ignore it? It's our choice. But I think the National Board should be a major role player in helping us to redefine what we mean by teaching, what we mean by theory, what we mean by practice, helping us to understand what it means to use virtual learning as well as regular learning as we prepare children to be citizens and to be the citizens they want to be for the future. I'm proud of NBPTS. And when I looked at the numbers, 122,000 now, by the end of the year, 125,000, that's what I was told, already certified. And what the thing that really impressed me when I saw the study that said that the children who are taught by National Board certified teachers tend to learn at a higher level than the children who are not taught by national certified teachers. And that's something I want to happen. It won't happen before in my lifetime, but I hope it will happen. And that is we will see a day when every teacher in the United States of America will be nationally certified. And every child will have the opportunity to be taught by a national certified teacher. I want you, National Board, to continue the strong leadership that you have demonstrated over the last 30 some years. I want you to spread that leadership. I want you to continue to work with colleges and universities and help them to transform the way they prepare teachers. I want every child in America to have an excellent teacher, a teacher who's nationally certified. Thank you for the award. I'm deeply honored to receive it. I'm deeply honored to have been a part of the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards. And I, what I want to say to you, continue to do the excellent work that you're doing and make every school district proud, make every child proud. Thank you and God bless you. Mary, right now is when you'd receive a standing ovation and that's what's happening virtually. If you can see the screen, everyone is just so impressed with your remarks and your career and your continued uh, contributions. Mark, we want to make sure we get every word Mary just said and send it to every National Board Certified Teacher and use it with legislators, governors, people all across this nation to uh, emphasize the comments that Mary said. Mary, normally this would be the time I'd give you the award. I hope you've either received it or will receive it yes, soon. Yes, I'm holding it. All right, I can see it now. Yes. <laughs> That's terrific. Thank you. I want to say a special thank you to Mark and uh, NEA who brought all these wonderful people together, our special guests who spoke this evening. And I'm sure Mary would appreciate in this day and time, a personal written card or note uh, is always something very nice. If you felt like you didn't get a chance to speak tonight, 
just send that to Mary, and I'm sure she would uh, love receiving those. At this time, we're going to honor some outgoing uh, board members. We invite our guests to stay with us, but certainly understand if uh, your favorite news channel and your favorite adult beverage is pulling you away. And uh, if you need to go feed the dog or the cat or uh, whatever. But this time we're going to move into honoring our uh, retiring board members. Um, I have a copy of this if you would like for me to send it to you. Mary, uh, you send that to Mark and we will get that distributed because that was powerful. And I I'd love to have uh, all three uh, you guys uh, that, that spoke tonight. Uh, I think the remarks were just very powerful. We ought to have it in our history, history as a as a board. Um, you know, we've had some uh, distinguished uh, directors, and we're wanting to honor three of our uh, outgoing directors who are term limited. Uh, we've had the good fortune to have their leadership, and I've had the good fortune to have their personal counsel on a number of issues over the last few years. The first one we want to honor is uh, Melissa Albright. Melissa, we want to thank you for your uh, dedicated years of service. She is an NBCT. She recently retired from teaching fifth grade English language arts and social studies at Wilson Creek Intermediate School in Springfield, Missouri. Melissa was born into a family of teachers, so you can say she was destined to be a teacher. During her time in the classroom, Melissa's students saw her pursue three advanced degrees, including national board certification. As Melissa has noted, she has shown to her students the importance of setting goals, working hard, and celebrating the achievement of uh, reaching goals. As an NBCT, Melissa has presented workshops on the national board process, mentored candidates, and continues to educate school boards and educators about the uh, benefits of national board certification. Melissa served on the nominating committee and mobi mobilization committee. She's also chaired the nominating committee. And as anyone can tell you, Jim Brooks can tell you that the nominating committee is not an easy task and requires diplomatic and political skills as the committee navigates through many uh, election related issues. Melissa was outstanding in this role and we are so grateful for all she has done. Melissa, we wish you well in your retirement, but I understand you've already started on the next uh, chapter of your life. Do you want to tell us about it and say a few words? Melissa. Thank you, Terry. Yes, I um, have failed at retirement. Um, I decided in July to retire after a 31 year career in the classroom. Um, and in September, I took a job with Missouri NEA as a temporary UNISERV director. Um, fingers crossed that turns into a full-time position, um, but we will, uh, we will wait and see what, what that brings. But um, my national board journey started when a school board member came to me and said, there's this thing called national board certification and you'd be perfect to do it. Nobody else has done it. and you can just come to every board meeting and share what, you, what this thing is to us. Because if anybody can do it, you can do it. So I didn't do any research. I just went, typed in my name, all the information, and hit sign up and paid my money. And it became a journey that truly transformed my teaching. It transformed me as a teacher. And you hear this from almost every nationally board certified teacher. It's the greatest accomplishment of my career. It impacted my students every single day. And to this day, even after all the advanced degrees, um, I have done everything you can do in, in my profession. National board certification has been my crowning jewel. And I'm truly honored that my union stood behind me. I had Missouri NEA, um, directors of teaching and learning and presidents stand behind me and encourage me and push me through this journey. They believed in me to nominate me for a position on the board of directors. And I've held that position for six years. When I decided to retire, I decided that it was time for me to step off the board and let someone else step up and um, continue this. 
Um, I want you to know that even though I am not going to continue on the board and I am not in the classroom, I am not done advocating for the national board. I am not done advocating for education and for high quality teachers in the classroom. You will still see me out there um, doing everything I can to promote the profession that I have had for 31 years. You should know that the National Board has the most amazing staff members and I thank each and every one of you for providing your leadership, your advice, and your guidance to the teachers in our, in our country. I want to say thank you to the NEA and to Missouri NEA for your guidance, your leadership, and your trust with me in this position. I want to especially reach out and thank Mark for the endless messages that I send and the questions, especially when I was the newbie on the board and it was like every other day, how, what do I do? How do I do this? Where do I go? What do I do? And always with a, with a smile and a hug, he would help me manage that. I want to thank Peggy for her outstanding leadership for all that she has done for this organization and what she will do. This organization is in great hands. And to my fellow board members, past and present, you have done an amazing job. And I know that you will continue to do amazing work. Don't forget about me. Find me on Facebook, find me on Twitter, reach out to me. You guys are like a family. And it has truly been one of the, the biggest honors of my career to serve on the board of directors for the National Board of Professional Teaching Standards. Thank you, Terry, for your leadership and for Everybody on this screen, so many of you are my role models and my heroes, um, and I have looked up to you over the years, and I, I'm, it is my, my hope that I made you proud. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Melissa. Uh, Kathy Anderson is an NBCT and a guest teacher for the Eau Claire uh, the Area School District in Wisconsin. In fact, Kathy was the first NBCT certified uh, in science in Wisconsin. Kathy has said, teaching is my vocation, education is my avocation. She believes all students are exceptional people with gifts and abilities that allow them to learn and grow in knowledge and experience. Kathy said she is part of the conversation of change rather than a protector of the past. Teachers need to be encouraged that although daunting, the task at hand can be a wonderful change. Education today is a vibrant, adapting, successful venture that needs to be celebrated and advanced rather than kept stagnant just to maintain the status quo. I stand up for accomplished teaching knowing that it is the one sure way to meet the educational challenges of today. Kathy, these words are indeed are very powerful and we need to replicate those for other NBCTs. And they're more relevant uh, as Mary pointed out this year than ever before with COVID. On the board, Kathy has served on the audit, executive, finance and nominating committees. She is always prepared for meetings. She keeps me on my toes as, as chair. And I know if Kathy's gonna ask a question, I better be prepared. And uh, she asked great hard questions that benefit the National Board. We're honored to have Kathy Anderson serve on the board, and I'm sure she will continue to uh, lend her voice in support of the National Board uh, certification. Kathy, you want to say a few words? Uh, thank you, Terry. Um, following uh, Melissa's great comments is going to be really hard because she said all the things that I think um, all of us feel as National Board certified teachers. Um, when um, Mary Fitzgerald mentioned the nation at risk, I have that. I remember sitting in a board or in a um, staff meeting and having my superintendent wave this at our faces and say, this, you are the problem. Teachers are the problem. And I want to say that as a National Board of Certified Teachers, I know that teachers are the solution, not the problem. And I value so much being a National Board Certified Teacher. Um, my journey to being on the board was a long one. Um, at, at one point, you could self-nominate yourself to be on the board, and I took advantage of that. 
and um, eventually was successful in getting on the board. I would like to say thanks to many of the same people that Melissa highlighted, you know, Peggy and the staff, um, especially Joe, Kristen, Mark, Ellen, Michelle, Lisa, Michael, and um, Andrea. It's like everybody that I ever asked a question of, they felt made me feel like I was a contributor instead of a detractor. And I really appreciate that. And I'd also like to say that I was proud to represent teaching professionals on the board. I tried to use my voice to elevate teachers in the classroom and to talk about our students. That's what I felt my role was, and I hope I did a good job at that. I'm not gonna pr prolong my comments, but because um, um, Melissa really said it all. I wanna say saying goodbye to something that I have um, a passion about is really hard to do. I came to the board to represent the teachers and students as well as advocate for the national board process and I will continue to do that. And like Melissa said, um, I'm kind of one of those people that I probably never really will go away. So <laughs> you can expect to see me on your surveys and in the chat rooms and on Twitter and, and Facebook groups and I'm gonna be working with candidates. I've already started a, another group of um, renewal and MOC um, candidates. So I will be around. I may not have always been the most eloquent or the most per persuasive, but I hope I showed my passion for teaching and student voice in a process that changes everyone who undertakes it. I do encourage our new board members to ask the hard questions, engage in courageous conversation, and tackle the wicked problems that come up because we need to be those advocates for those in the classroom. I wanna just take a little bit of a page out of my favorite musical, The Wicked, and give, leave you with a few words. I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason, bringing something we must learn, and we are led to those who help us most grow if we let them. So let me say before we part, so much of me is made of what I learned from you, all of you, my board members, fellow board members, staff, um, others. You'll be with me like a handprint on my heart because I knew you, I have been changed for the good. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Kathy. That's one of my favorite musicals also. And my daughter cried when they were singing that song. So it really touches your heart. Uh, our uh, final one is Suzanne Silk. Suzanne is an MBCT and a business technology instructor with the Western Technology Center in Oklahoma. She became an NBCT in 2003. She's been inspired to connect with students, teachers, administrators, legislators, and stakeholders to advance NBCT. She is a strong advocate of national board through recruitment, community leadership, public speaking, and candidate support to maintain the high and rigorous standards for all teachers. She and I share a passion to really help uh, career technical education teachers uh, become nationally board certified and to really focus on career readiness and college readiness of all students. She established the Oklahoma National Board Network and has been instrumental promoting board certifications in the state through conferences and meeting with state legislators and other stakeholders. Uh, the state uh, Commissioner of Education, Joy Hopmeister, a very good friend of mine. And when I said, do you know Suzanne? Oh yes, I know Suzanne. She's a strong advocate for National Board. Um, she served on the nominating committee, the finance committee, and most recently chaired the audit committee. She also uh, was chair of the advisory committee for the work uh, with ACTE, uh, that's our career readiness and CTE teachers organization. We're so fortunate to have her experience in the CTE area. Uh, Suzanne, we were honored to have you serve on the board and I'm sure you'll continue to be a voice for supporting NBCTs all across Oklahoma and the nation. You wanna say a few words? Sure, thank you so much, Terry. This is just um, pretty surreal, you know, as, as I look back over uh, my journey as a board member serving with all of you uh, dedicated and phenomenal board members and national board staff that is second to none. 
I just find it so ironic. Um, ironic in the fact that I never wanted to be a teacher. I, I, I came from a family of educators and I always prided myself in taking a different career path. So um, when my boss came to me one day and said that the business teacher had found a man on the internet and ran away into the night. Remember, this is, this is in 1995. The internet was new and finding a man on the internet was pretty scandalous. And he turned to me and said, Mrs. Silk, you are going to be the business teacher when we come back after Christmas break. So I was scared and I thought, I, I just don't know about this. But I, I went into the classroom. I worked harder than I have ever worked before. And I knew I was a good teacher, but there was always this nagging question in the back of my head. Am I as good as I can be? And, you know, I came in as a second career. Um, I came in through an alternative path and I was 40 years old when I came into the classroom. So I, I just had so much to prove. I had so much to prove to not only myself, but I had, I had things to prove to my students and my parents and my colleagues and um, my community. And so when I heard that there was a certification that could prove you could provide evidence that you met the high standards of what teachers could, should know and be able to do, I said, sign me up. And so the minute I had completed my third year of teaching, I registered, I went through the process, I described and I analyzed and I reflected on every single aspect of what I did in the classroom. And I became a National Board Certified Teacher. And I kind of thought, I'm validated. Now I know that I'm a good teacher. So I can go back to the classroom and do my thing, and, and that's that. But guess what? That is not what happened. So what I found was that professional doors started opening, opening like magic. It was like, you know, starting out with mentoring and coaching candidates and being able to serve as the um, state liaison for national board and um, just all different kinds of professional doors that would never have been available to, available to me had I not gone through the national board process. So I can say, without hesitation that had I not gone through the certification process, number one, I would not have stayed in the classroom. Number two, my career in teaching would not have been as rewarding and as rich, and I would not be the teacher leader that I am today. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank all of you for all the tireless work that you do to move the national board process forward. And I hope that you remember when you close your eyes every night that each of you are changing the lives of teachers and students every single day. And I, I'm, I'm gonna miss all of you guys so much. Um, you've taught me lots. I, I appreciate all your expertise. Uh, the staff is, you know, just parallel to none. I've never seen anyone as dedicated and as united to the goal of making sure that teachers are what they should be. So I hope that our paths cross again. And um, I love all of you. So thank you for this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Suzanne. Jim, Mary, 
see what you started? These three are a testament to what your vision was for the National Board and to all of you who participated this evening and have supported the National Board in one way or the other and to Peggy for your leadership and to the whole staff that's currently continuing this work in spite of all the COVID challenges, in spite of all the political games that are being played these days, those three people represent the best of what we've done. And we've had so many like that, that have served on the board and will continue to serve our children in this nation. I do want to take a moment and say a special thanks to Mark. Mark makes me sound a lot more eloquent than I really am. And uh, he does such a marvelous job in pulling this together this evening. And Peggy, your team for pulling all of this together this whole weekend. And uh, uh, Mark gave me a good quote to end with. He said, uh, from the words of Garrison Keeler for our departing directors and for all of our friends tonight, be well, do good work, and keep in touch. And in my words, raise a glass of your favorite beverage, celebrate the accomplishments of the folks we've honored this evening, and celebrate National Board and stay committed to our goals and vision of a highly qualified teacher in front of every child in America. Good night and thank you for joining us.